Potty training is something you need to work on with every puppy. They obviously don't come to you knowing to go outside rather than inside, so there's a process you have to follow. Luckily, we've trained thousands of dogs and we've potty trained every single one of them successfully. I guarantee this will work as long as you follow our tips. I've got a lot of guidance and tips to give you. Make sure you watch until the end of the video because I'm going to tie everything together. And I also want to touch base on some medical things that are very easy to identify and solve as long as you know what you're looking for. Because sometimes potty training is not a behavioral issue and it's actually medical. The first piece of advice I have for you is create a potty log. Now, I know the word potty log sounds kind of silly, but it is super important. A common mistake a lot of people make is they just don't keep track of their dog's successes and accidents, and that's where the potty log comes in. What it does, it's a printed out log, and we uh, give these to all of our clients, and you mark down every time the dog goes to the bathroom. You, you know, you mark down, was it a bowel movement? Was it pee? Was it inside? Was it outside? Was it a success? Was it a failure? And this really helps identify issues with your potty training. And I can give you a quick example. I've seen this many times. I'll be working with a client, and we'll see a certain time of day in the potty log, where they're having all these accidents. And I'll say, hey, what's going on at, you know, three o'clock? See, we have all these accidents. And they'll say, oh, that's when the kids get home from school. And we find out the dog's not being watched well at that point in time. So the potty log allows us to give really custom advice based upon your dog. Another common time would be Saturday. Uh, and, you know, we'll have a Saturday and everything goes off the rails. And I see all these accidents on Saturday. And we find out college football's on and the person supposed to be watching the dog is not watching the dog, they're watching football. So when we see these issues quickly, it's very easy for us as trainers to step in and help you fix them. Once we've created a potty log, then we can use that to create a potty schedule. And the reason for this is every dog is different and you have to know what they're capable of. So if your dog is eight weeks old, they can't hold it very long, right? And we're going to touch base on that more in a few minutes, but they can only hold it, you know, for maybe a half hour or so, when, you know, when they're active throughout the day. But if your dog is six months old, they can hold it a lot longer. It'll also be based upon how many accidents they're having. And we have to know, you know, where they're having success and failure. So you create your potty log, you work on it, you track all your successes and accidents, and then we build a custom schedule based upon your dog. Now, the potty schedule, like I mentioned, is based upon your dog. So let's talk about an eight-week-old puppy for a minute. They can't hold it very long, right? 30 minutes would be about my max. So if I have an eight-week-old dog and I, you know, I'm following my schedule, I'm going to put on there, I want the dog out every, every 30 minutes all day long if they're awake. So I'm marking that on my, on my potty log each time, my success, my failure, every 30 minutes. As the dog gets older, I'm going to increase that time. So you could add maybe 15 minutes or so per week. So every week, now after one week, it'd be 45 minutes, and then it'd be an hour. You're slowly going to build from there. There are also a few key times that you must take your dog out, especially when they're a young puppy. Now, the first one is right when they wake up. Now, of course, that's pretty obvious, you know, first thing in the morning, but I mean any time they wake up. So if they've been laying on a dog bed at your feet, and they've been asleep for 20 minutes, and they wake up, I would walk them outside immediately to go to the bathroom. And the reason for this is when they wake up, they're not thinking about, you know, the rules. They're not thinking about what you might want from them. They might just wake up, stretch, and realize they have to pee and go right there. So anytime they wake up, take them out to the bathroom. Another key time would be after they've eaten or after they drink some water. So when a dog has breakfast or, or dinner, when they eat some food, generally speaking, a puppy's going to have a bowel movement very soon after that. So within a half hour is very common. So after they eat their food, I would have them outside for sure within a half hour to give them a chance to have that bowel movement. Another piece of advice for you is never let your puppy out of your sight. And when I say never, I mean never, not even for 10 seconds. That's all it takes is they sneak around behind the couch, they pee, you don't know, they come back and you think everything's good and then you find that spot much later. So what is key when you're potty training a puppy is that you have zero unseen accidents. Absolutely zero. But I want to make clear, I'm talking about unseen accidents, not accidents. So if you catch them in the act, that can be a learning experience. If you don't catch them in the act, if they sneak around behind the couch and they go to the bathroom or they walk into the other room and relieve themselves, if nothing is said to them, they start to think that's okay, right? They're not going to understand that, oh, hey, my owner didn't see me just now, so I, you know, peed in here. And if he saw me, he'd be unhappy, but since he didn't, I, you know, that's okay. They're not going to think like that. They're just going to pee in the other room and they're going to feel like that's okay. And through time, they're going to get really confused. So we see our biggest issues with clients when they aren't watching the dog enough the dog is having unseen accidents, and the dog becomes very confused about what's expected of them. In order to have no unseen accidents, do whatever you need to for your house. So some people will tether the dog to them and have them on a leash all the time. 
That's not wrong. That's not bad. I'm not the biggest fan of it for me personally, but I'm not opposed to people doing it if it works for you. I like to use gates. So what I would do is if I'm in the living room, I would gate off every way in or out of the room. If I was in the kitchen, the same thing. That way I can keep an eye on my dog. If they walk off, I can hear the little, you know, click of their nails and hear where they're going and they can't sneak off into another room. And I only take the gate down when I'm ready to follow them. If you've filled out a potty log and you've built a proper potty schedule, you can really use this to your advantage because you should know when your dog has to go to the bathroom. You should know when they have to pee and when they have to poop as long as you're staying on your normal schedule. So now you can watch them a lot closer at times when we call it owing us one. And what I mean by that is, you know, they eat breakfast and within a half hour, they always have a bowel movement. And let's say for some reason today, your dog hasn't. It's been 45 minutes since they ate and they haven't had a bowel movement. You cannot trust your dog whatsoever, right? I would say he owes you one. You know he has to go and he just hasn't done it. I would watch him like an absolute hawk, even closer than I normally do. If I see him walk across the room, I'm looking to see, is he smelling? Is his tail going up? Like, he, you know, might have to go to the bathroom. Does he start to circle? I'm looking for all those warning signs. But rather than just doing that, you can also be more proactive and get him outside. Get him on leash at that point in time. You know they have to go, so why not take him in the yard right then and start doing your bathroom routine to get them to go so you can praise them for a job well done. I fully understand you can't watch your dog all the time. So put yourself in, in the situation where you, pick, you, know, you think, okay, they owe me one. They ate breakfast, it's been 45 minutes and they haven't gone and I think they need to. And maybe you have to do something, right? You have to go to the bathroom yourself or jump in the shower or what, take a phone call. At that point in time, you, someone has to watch the dog or they need to be in a crate. To me, a pen is not good enough because there's enough space. They're probably just going to go to the corner of the pen, go to the bathroom, and then, you know, lay in their bed and be happy. So I'd put them in a crate. The crate has to be sized properly. If you put your puppy in a huge crate, you know, like let's say you have an adult lab and you take their crate and now you use it for the puppy. What If you don't use a divider, what's going to happen is your puppy is likely to go to the back of the crate, go to the bathroom, and then move to the front of the crate, lay down and go to sleep like everything's okay. So if you're using a big crate for a puppy, you absolutely need a divider, or you can just use a smaller crate and move to a bigger one when they're ready. Another thing to consider is having some food and water limitations for your dog. Don't free feed and don't have tons of water out all of the time. This makes potty training really hard, so you need to have a food and water schedule and stick to it. Your food schedule, it doesn't matter if you feed two or three times a day, that's really up to you. I'm not a believer in one time a day, even though some people do it. So I would do at least two, maybe three times a day. Try to be consistent on that. And being consistent is going to help out a lot. Because like I mentioned earlier, your dog is going to eat and then need to go to the bathroom. If they free feed throughout the day, all of a sudden you lose that, right? Because they might have a little snack here, a little snack there, and you don't know when they need to go. So I want my puppy to eat all of their food at one time, and then I can take them out to go to the bathroom. Water is a little bit trickier. So, I, you know, they need water throughout the day, but some dogs drink way too much water and they're peeing constantly. So here you need to know your dog. If they tend to guzzle water, then I would definitely limit it. And it's something I'm a huge believer in is limit the water before bed. So picture your puppy. If they guzzle down an entire bowl of water right before bed, it is basically a guarantee they're going to have to pee during the middle of the night. So I would cut off water at least a couple hours before bedtime. When you're taking your dog outside, you need to have some sort of structure and some sort of routine. So a couple things I would recommend. One, always take them to the same door. This helps a lot. We'll touch base on this a little bit later, but they start to learn to go to that door when they have to go to the bathroom. Another thing I would suggest is use some sort of word. So if I had my dog in the house and I think they have to go, I use the word outside. Obviously, you can say whatever you like, but I would say, hey, you need to go outside and I'd get them excited. I might clip the leash on or call them to the door or, you know, whatever. I take them with me. But when I get outside, if the puppy's young, I would clip a leash on. And the reason is it keeps them focused. A lot of young dogs will go in the yard and they'll just run around, they'll smell, they'll do stuff they're like, oh, a leaf, a squirrel. And they're you know distracted by everything. And you think, oh, hey, they don't need to go, right? I was out there for five minutes. You bring them in. Now they come in. There's no more cool stuff happening. They realize they have to pee and then they go. So in the yard, if your puppy's distracted by everything, you could practice the heel command, some loose leash walking, but something to get them kind of in training mode if needed, just thinking about you for a moment and just calming down and then tell them, okay, buddy, go potty, go outside, whatever words you use. This really helps. You shouldn't be out there. It shouldn't take 20 or 30 minutes to get them to pee. If it's taking that long, they either really don't have to go or there's a good chance they're just very distracted by everything that's going on. 
Okay, so we've talked about a lot already. We've talked about potty logs, potty schedules, keeping an eye on your dog, when to feed them, when to give them water. But now we need to talk about teaching your dog right from wrong. So, so far we've been really proactive, right, in getting our dog in that right schedule. But sometimes you're going to have to be reactive. Your dog is going to go to the bathroom in the house. They're going to have an accident. What do you do? Let's start with talking about what to do when they have a success, and then we're going to jump into what to do when there's a failure. When you take your dog outside, you know, I know you're not going to do this, but you wouldn't want your dog to go to the bathroom and you stand there quietly and say nothing, right? Because they're not going to know that you're happy for what they did. But the mistake a lot of clients make is they're too excited. So the dog starts to pee or starts to have a bowel movement and they say, good boy, yes, look at you. And they distract the dog and they stop halfway. So they might not release their bladder fully, they pee a little bit, then they come in and have an accident and the person's wondering, you know, why? They just went outside to pee. So when they go and when they do a good job outside, praise them, but I would use calm praise. So my praise generally looks like this. God, that's my boy, there you go. I'm giving a little praise while they're going. And when they finish, that's when I give more praise. So that's when I might say, yes, that's my boy, look at you. And I pet them, I talk to them. You can use treats here if you want. I don't use treats for my own dogs when I do this because my praise is enough. They're very happy about that. I scratch their ears, I pet them. If you wanna use treats, that's absolutely okay. But don't feel like you need to do it every single time. Give them praise, give them love and affection, give a treat if you want. But eventually you do wanna make sure that your dog is working for you and not just working for the food. So I promised you we were going to talk about what to do when there's an accident, so let's dive into that now. We don't do the picture like this super old school method you picture of like, you know, the dog pees on the ground and they pick the dog up and take it over there and say no and rub their nose in it. Don't do that. Um, or picture like the newspaper of the nose. We don't do that. But the goal is you want something to establish, hey, I don't like what you did right now. It has to be tailored to your dog. Every single dog is different. So some dogs are very timid, and if you said, hey, no, their ears are going to go back, and if that's your dog, you do not want to be any sterner than that, right? You're, we do not want any fear here. The goal is that you're not scaring the dog. You're just making it clear, I don't like what you did right there. So it could just be a, hey, no. If your dog is a much more assertive, confident dog, you might have to be more stern. It might have to be, Ralph, no, to catch their attention. Sometimes, you know, people will clap loudly and say no as they clap once really loud to break the dog's focus. You need to know your dog. You can give a physical correction, but I, I feel that's very rarely needed. You know, you could run over to them and grab the scruff or a collar and give them a little tug and tell them no. But if you're doing your job right, that really shouldn't be needed. We spend a lot of time proofing the word no. And what that means is you're using no for various things. If they break a sit stay, you know, we would tell them no and we'd take them back. If they jump and nip, we'd use that word. So some trainers might tell you not to use the word no much because if you use it too much, it'll lose its meaning. It only loses the meaning if you don't back it up. So if they start to realize no means you're not happy and you're going to stop what they're doing, no becomes more powerful through time as opposed to less powerful. So for the average dog, simply telling them no sternly, go get them, and then now run them outside and tell them now go potty, go outside, whatever your word is. And then all is forgiven. So they you know, started to pee in the house. You said no. You ran them outside. They go to the bathroom. Praise the heck out of them. You're no longer worried about what happened inside your house a minute ago. Dogs have great memories, but they don't make associations the way humans do. So if you were outside and you said, hey, you know, you're a bad dog. You peed in my house. They're not going to understand. They're going to think you're mad about what's happening right now. So forget about the accident they just had. Praise them for finishing. Come in, clean up, and move on. I mentioned at the start of the video that sometimes potty training issues are not behavioral and they're medical. The common reasons here are bladder infections or UTIs. So urinary tract infections are super common in young puppies, especially in females. We see it all the time. And the hallmark of them is just it's strange bathroom behavior. So I'll give you some examples. One is they're peeing constantly. So a puppy should pee a lot but not 30 times or 40 times a day. If that's happening all day long, all night long, they're just peeing that much, that's kind of weird, and that'd be a red flag for me. Another is when they kind of dribble pee when they walk. So we see it a lot of dogs will walk across the room and they're dribbling pee as they go. That's a pretty common sign. There's some other ones, you know, one would be if there's blood in the urine. I hope if there was blood in your dog's urine, you would already flag that as a problem if you saw it. But a lot of times people don't see it because the dog is peeing outside and they're, you know, they're not, of course, examining the pee. Uh, another common one is when the dog just can't seem to finish. Like they'll pee and it feels like they were done and they stand up and they walk and they start peeing again and they almost seem uncomfortable peeing. 
And then another common thing I see a lot is dogs that pee when they're laying down. And there's, of course, other causes for almost all these things I'm talking about, but U UTIs are very common. And we'll see it sometimes a dog is laying down in their cage and they don't get up and bark. They just pee while they're sleeping uh, or while they're laying down resting, chewing a bone, they pee. That to me would be a, a big sign to get your dog to the vet to get them checked out. All right, so now let's jump into some questions. We get questions from clients all the time, so we jotted down a couple that we wanted to answer today. The first one is, what's the fastest way to potty train a puppy? And the answer to this is consistency. If you're 100% consistent, this is going to go fast. If you're not consistent, if you make some mistakes, if your schedule's all over the place, this is going to take absolutely forever. Your dog might grow out of it through time and become perfect just because they can hold it longer, but you might also have a one-year-old dog who's going to the bathroom in the house. So be consistent, and this will go much quicker than you think. Another question is, should I use pee pads? We're not big fans of pee pads. Some clients use them and do have success, but to me, the problem is you have to get rid of them sometime. And we've seen so many dogs that are, you know, two, three, four years old that are still peeing where the pee pad used to be. And they're going over to that spot and they're peeing on your floor. So we really only use pee pads in limited situations. So if we have a client with limited mobility, an elderly client, or a very young dog with small fur, and, you know, you happen to live in, you know, Buffalo, New York, or something like that, and it's a super cold winter, you know, maybe if we can't figure out any other option, but I would much rather see you take your dog out frequently and uh, just avoid the need for pee pads. So I love this next question. How do I get my dog to go to the door or give me some sort of sign? Now, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Some people use bells and that, that's a whole different thing, but just getting your dog to go to the door. I mentioned this earlier, take them out the same door every single time. This makes a big difference. So what I would do is I would have my word and with my own puppy, I, if I see them and I think they need to go, I'd say, hey bud, you need to go outside? Come on, let's go outside and I'm coaxing them with me, I'm running to the door, you know, excitement. Come on, let's go outside. We get to that door, they get there. And then if they're very young, I clip their leash on. If they're a little bit older, then I would just open the door and say, come on, let's go outside. And I'd get them in the yard, they go, I praise them, I bring them back in. Through time, your dog's gonna learn two things. One, they're gonna learn to go to that door. So you might end up with a dog who naturally goes to that door every time they have to go. But it also gives you another way to communicate with your dog. Because if you talk to them in that manner, through time, what'll happen is you'll be on the couch or you'll be at your desk working. Your dog will be looking at you kind of funny and you'll think, hey, they might have to go. And when you say, hey, do you need to go outside? If they do, they're going to give you some sign. They might get really excited or they might just run off. But if you if you don't have that routine with them and you say, do you need to go potty? They might not know what to do, right? They might just stand there. So you build this routine up of when I say, do you need to go outside? We run to the door together. Pretty soon it becomes a habit. This next question is also a great one. Can an eight-week-old dog be potty trained? And the answer is not really. So what I mean by that is there's no way you can trust an eight-week-old dog. So a lot of times clients send, we do a board and train program, the dog stays in our home so we can take them in fairly young. And let's say we take in an eight-week-old dog and we train it for a couple weeks and now it's 10 weeks old. That dog is going to be really good. They're going to be able to, you know, hold it for a while. They're going to have way fewer accidents. We're going to make a ton of progress, but they're not fully potty trained, meaning they can't hold it. You can't go to the grocery store and leave a 10-week-old dog or an 8-week-old out, dog out in the house and expect them not to go. So they can learn right from wrong. They can make some progress, but their bladders are not fully developed and they're not mentally developed enough to be considered potty trained at that age. But right now, if you think about everything we've gone through in this video, none of it is incredibly hard. It's just You just have to be on and focused. Use the crate to your advantage, but when that dog is out, you need to watch them like a hawk. If you do this, Trust me on it, your dog is going to be potty trained in a hurry, and you're going to move on and have a great life with your dog.